This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about why the world needs Bitcoin. We're going to get back to basics in this video. First of all, the world needs money, in part because of the coincidence of wants problems. So for example, you may grow tomatoes, I grow apples, I want to buy some of your tomatoes, but you don't want to exchange them for my apples. It's also confusing to try to figure out how many apples a tomato is worth. So this is basically money as a medium of exchange. Also, it's nice to be able to store your savings, your accumulated economic energy, you might call it, in a portable form that is widely accepted. For example, it's nice to be able to work hard now, save some of your earnings, and then have that economic energy available when you are too old or too sick to work. This would be money as a store of value. The only problem is that fiat money is a terrible store of value. For example, here's what the most successful and widely accepted currency of the 20th and 21st century looks like in terms of purchasing power. One dollar used to be worth about $26 in current purchasing power, and now it's only worth a dollar of purchasing power. So it's gone down a tremendous amount. There are other ways of store, storing your economic energy or storing your savings. For example, there's real estate, which has worked well for some people. But the problem with this is real estate, it's not portable. You obviously can't exchange it for apples or oranges in a very convenient way. It's not very liquid. There are very high fees, commissions that exist to make it liquid if you want to buy or sell. Real estate is also expensive to maintain, to insure, to protect, to stay up to date about all the government regula regulations and zoning and HOA requirements, etc. And then you have expensive property taxes as well. Another traditional savings vehicle, of course, is physical gold, but gold has its own problems. There are very high fees involved with buying or selling physical gold, and also gold cannot be sent over digital communication channels, which is really an essential property and a required property in our 21st century digital economy. And if you try to trade digital assets backed by gold, you are then forced to trust the custodian to keep the gold safe and not lie about whether the gold tokens are fully backed by real physical gold. That's a trust model that failed in 1971 when Nixon closed the convertibility window for gold for the US dollar, and that really gave us the current mess, the fiat standard. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button. That really helps this channel's reach. Hit the like button and leave a comment, maybe a, a question or a topic for a future video. So why not just keep your money in the bank? Well, first of all, fiat money, which is the only money that traditional banks accept, of course, fiat money meaning something like US dollars or yen or euros or Canadian dollars, fiat money is a melting ice cube. It loses purchasing power over time. Even the best of fiat currencies, as we saw with the US dollar in that previous graphic. And the other problem with banks is they never pay interest rates that are higher than the inflation rate. So you are constantly losing even more purchasing power in your savings account, in your CDs, etc. Also, banks cannot be trusted. They cannot be trusted in, in normal times, and they certainly cannot be trusted during emergency conditions. People who live in Lebanon, for example, know how bad banks can turn when things get really bad. And we even have this in the US and Canada. We have PayPal basically stealing your money if they don't like the information you're talking about on social media. So governments and private corporations and public corp corporations use banks and use money to try to control what you think, what you say, and what you do. This is what happened in Canada. It can happen in a very civilized first world country with strong property rights or a country that used to have strong property rights. This is what happened to the Canadian truckers. And it's important here not to get distracted by the politics. You may or may not agree with what this whole issue was about. But the thing is, if one side can freeze your money and then the other side comes and takes political power, they can also freeze your money. So this is why it's very important that money can be neutral. This is why it might be nice to have a way to route around banks and pay people directly, in other words, peer-to-peer -peer money. Because if your money can be censored or frozen, it's actually impossible, as we've seen, to have free speech or freedom to protest government or corporate policies. And if your money is controlled by a centralized authority, any government or corporation can apply pressure or even take over that centralized authority to do whatever it wants to do with your money. So when I see headlines like this, that PayPal stablecoin is a watershed moment for finance, this will be tokens that will be issued by, by Paxos and PayPal, and they'll be backed by US dollars. This is not a watershed moment for finance. This is a complete disaster. PayPal's US dollar stablecoin is a token backed by melting ice cubes issued by a corporation that loves to freeze customers' funds. So you also don't want to use money 
that is controlled by a fintech company. And you definitely don't want to use money that's controlled by a small group of insiders like all the other cryptocurrencies are. Do you really want to use Cardano that's controlled by a guy who looks like this or, or XRP that is controlled by people who look like this? And thanks to Mitchell Hoddle for this graphic, but you definitely don't want to use money that is controlled by someone like this. That is not how you sleep well at night. Unlike Ethereum, XRP, Cardano, and all the other altcoins, Bitcoin cannot be changed or controlled by a small group of people. It's extremely safe, stable, base layer money. Its fiat price does vary quite a bit over time, but if you dollar cost average, this helps to take care of that problem. And this is what we would expect if an asset is being monetized from ground zero. There is gonna be volatility because the market cap of Bitcoin is so small compared to the market caps of traditional currencies and other traditional assets. But Bitcoin's volatility, its fiat price volatility, will continue to go down over time as, it mar as its market cap increases. So why does the world need Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin allows you to save for the future without having to worry about governments or corporations seizing your money or destroying its purchasing power through money printing like the central banks do, like the Federal Reserve does, like the ECB does, like the Bank of Japan does. Bitcoin is freedom money. Bitcoin frees people to pursue their hopes and dreams. Bitcoin frees human culture from monetary enslavement. And Bitcoin allows the arts and sciences to flourish without being held captive to government financing, funding, interference, and control. And in fact, Bitcoin allows regular people as well to get on with their lives and spend time with their families. Instead of being glued to their computer, checking their stock portfolios, monitoring massage government economic reports with fake data like non-farm payrolls and a fake massage CPI, which measures fake inflation, or worrying about the latest bank failures. When you use Bitcoin as your bank, you never have to read the news and worry whether your bank is the latest one to fail. Bitcoin is freedom money for you and me, and that's why the world needs Bitcoin. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video, and let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.